What's happening guys? Welcome to Ant's Bodybuilding and Fitness. So it's Q&A time. Be looking forward to doing this video. Um, had a quick browse through some of the questions you guys have asked me and yeah, some good ones. You've been very creative. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the Instagram questions first, then YouTube and I'll finish off with the Facebook ones. Uh, hope this won't take too long but we shall see. So Instagram questions first. Just have a little look. So, right, Jack Gad Fitness asks, uh, what tricks do you use to stay full during prep? Um, so, yeah, good question. Um, obviously, during the last stage of prep, when calories are low, um, staying full, I find, is one of the most important things, just to kind of, yeah, keep you on the, keep you on track. Um, volume, that's, that's, for me, one of the biggest things. Um, so, in the morning, I had a big bowl of, like, porridge and oats, um, and like to throw some egg whites in there, just try and get as much volume as possible really. And fibre, that's another one. Uh, keep the vegetable intake high, so I have a lot of frozen vegetables, um, frozen cauliflower, broccoli, carrots, that kind of thing. Other things to stay full, I like to drink a lot of water with my meals, so I often have like about a litre or so of water with the meals. And yeah, I'd say that's it really, just really try and hit that get that volume, get that volume high. Um, My Tiny Kingdom asks, how are you going to bulk up? Um, reverse dieting or some kind of anabolic rebound? Uh, not too sure what you mean by anabolic rebound, but um, I will be reverse dieting. So obviously trying to build up that metabolism gradually. Um, obviously my calories are around like the 2000 mark now, which is quite low for me. Um, in the peak of my bulk, I was like, Close to, close to three and a half thousand, so I'm going to gradually increase my calories to that point there um, and just get my my hormones and everything else just working working normally again. Um, his next question was, ever thought about making a transition from bodybuilding to physique? And it's funny actually because when I um, first mentioned to people that I was competing, they presumed it was in physique uh, and... I have actually thought about it, um, but for me, my passion is bodybuilding. I just love the idea of being judged solely on on, on the physique, really. Um, the level of separation, definition, and, but yeah, maybe one day, we'll see, maybe one day. Uh, right. Um, Duranosaurus asks... Uh, you're around 72 kilos. How tall are you? I'm five foot nine. So five foot nine or just under. Um, 174.5 to be exact. Right. Ricky Lee. Hey man, from the gym. I know you. <laughs> he says, what is your favourite movie and who is your favourite actor? Oh, nice. A non-training related question. Right. Oh, favourite movie. Ah, uh, this is... Oh. My favourite movie, my favourite recent movie is, um, what was it called? The Theory of Everything, the Stephen Hawking's movie. Um, I thought it was a brilliant film, come out last last year, I believe. Yeah, really, really impressive movie. Favourite actor, Steve Carell, all day. Love Steve Carell. He's great in The Office. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go with him. Another one of my favourite actors is, what's his name? James Spader, who's also in the US office. Um... But yeah, Steve Carell, definitely number one. Peppermint tea, very nice. Okay, right, another from Jack Gad Fitness. He asks, do you hit your macros but go over on your calories? As I do on Fitness Pal, I wondered if you had the same problem. Um, I have had that issue before with my Fitness Pal and I'm not entirely sure why it happens. Uh, I think either maybe the product changes slightly and... As a result, the macronutrient content changes, but they don't change your calories. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure, to be honest with that one, man. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm not, I'm not too sure, but I have encountered that problem before. So usually, I'll just hit the macros, and the calories will be a little bit higher than, sometimes lower, but generally higher than, than what they should be. But yeah, I'd say just go for those, go for those macros. Right, Phil, DIM96, asks... How do you mask your hunger to eat whilst dieting? I want to try fasting during the morning to get to use my 
uh, not eating huge amounts during my bulk. Any tips or just tips to stay satisfied for longer? Cheers. Um, See, so I'm going to go back to the volume really. I think just try and get as much volume uh, with your foods as you can. Um, so foods that are very nutrient dense but not very calorie dense. So a lot of those vegetables. And another one I find uh, t instead of having um, oats with your protein, try all bran instead or oat bran. You find it slightly lower in carbs and that's another way to really get that volume up. Um, and because of the massive fibre content, you'll keep the hunger at bay. Apologies for my voice, by the way. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm in the, the deepest, darkest stages of contest prep at the moment, so, yeah. Sleep is always in my mind at the moment, and trying not to, not to fall over. Um, cool, right, some more questions. Uh, Georgios. Ilkamidis, sorry if I've mispronounced that, um, says, good question here, uh, what do you think an athlete needs to compete on stage? Um, I think one of the most important things is to give yourself enough time, so, I mean, I'm, in my last show I already competed at a weight that was lower than what I thought it would be, and I ended up losing about 13 kilos to get there. Um, and to try and retain as much muscle as possible, you want to give yourself enough time um, because dieting is not going to be kind to the body. And also, also, make sure you're just mentally prepared for contest prep because once you get into those deep, dark stages of prep, it's not a fun place to be. Um, you're going you're gonna to be irritable, hungry, constantly thinking about food. Um, and yeah, just make sure you're physically um, but yeah, really mentally prepared because whilst it's incredibly fun to step on stage um, just to show off all that hard work it's yeah it's so important just to have that have that right mindset okay and final question for Instagram from boop1761 says how does your wife put up with you um, I don't know <laughs> she's crazy that is my wife by the way so thanks babe appreciate that <laughs> Right, so I'm going to go on to the YouTube questions next. Some good ones there. Right, let's have a look. <laughs> okay, so first question on YouTube is from Mike Samuels. Um, so, Mike Samuels from Healthy, Li Health Healthy Living, Heavy Lifting. He asks, How long do you think your off season will be? And do you have any goals for that? Are you powerlifting strength goals, bringing up certain body parts, or reaching specific macro numbers? Um, really good question there. So how long do you think off-season will be? The plan is to have next year off and the compete at the earliest in 2017. Um, but that's at the earliest. It may be 2017, maybe 2018. We're going to see how things go. Uh, but 2017 will be the earliest I compete again. Um, my goals for the next time is just to bring an even, even better better package to the stage, really. So in terms of lagging body parts, yes, definitely want to bring up the delts a bit more. Because whilst I don't think they're, they're too bad, um, I think my chest you know, is a little bit overpowering sometimes. So I want to bring up the delts and the back to an extent as well. And a little bit around the kind of hamstring and calf area. But I'm part of team no calves, so uh, that's going to be a difficult one. Um, bring up macro numbers, another good one. Uh, yes, I've actually planned um, the next two months uh, post-show of macro numbers. So I've kind of planned the macros I want to hit during my reverse diet phase. Obviously, that's, I might have to tweak that a little bit here and there. Um, but um, yeah, and I've got a name to ideally want to be maintaining on around 500 grams of carbs a day during my off-season. If that's possible, we'll we'll soon find out but um uh yeah that's it i'm also going to try and lower my protein intake slightly so in my off season last time i was around 200 protein i'll try and get it down to 180 and then spread those the rest of the macros elsewhere right okay cam fitness asks what's your best body part to train and why um good question right 
At the moment, um, during my leaner stages, I really enjoy training shoulders. Um, I find you seems like an immediate pump when they're when they're when you're in those those low body fat stages, and they just look cool when they're pumped. You get that kind of round, rounded cap shoulder look. Um, when I'm bulking, it's slightly different. I love training legs, um, hitting those heavy squats, hitting new PRs. I do find it really enjoyable. Uh, on the flip side, at the moment training. Alright, sorry about that guys, I had to delete some old footage, the memory card was getting full. Okay, so yeah, um, back to Karen Fitness's question. Um, so yeah, legs, great to train when I'm all bulked up, have a bit more fat and energy reserves, hell to train when I'm lean. Okay, right, 3D Abs Glenn asks, how tall are you and what do you do for a living? So, yeah, like before, 174.5 or just under 5 foot 9, and I'm a personal trainer. Um, I tra train people at their homes at the moment, but yeah, I've worked um, in gym in a gym in the past before as well. Okay, John Augustenborg asks, "What uh, for questions to date? What do you consider your biggest accomplishment?" Um, so yeah, good question. Uh, for me, in terms of in the fitness industry, it's got to be um, my placing my first show. So uh, I went to my first show just over two months ago, or around two months ago now. And yeah, I won my class and I won the overall, which was such an amazing feeling and yeah, almost an addictive feeling when I kind of want to uh, yeah recapture. But um, yeah, so that was my biggest accomplishment to date in the in the fitness industry. Okay, right. So next, Dave McKinley, uh, sustainable fitness coach, asks, "How do you ensure your stubble is so on point <laughs> in all these videos?" Um, Thanks. Uh, I didn't know it was. Uh, and in all honesty, I don't really think stubble suits me that much. So, um, yeah, thanks for the compliment. It's, it's appreciated. Um, I don't do anything in particular. I shave not very frequently at the moment because I'm lazy. And, yeah, I think I'm just, just generally very stubbly. Um, how do I get the awesome bicep vein that splits in two on your right arm? I'm sure you mean that one there. Uh, <laughs> Um, I wish I'd know, so I'd be able to transfer it to my left arm as well. But uh, yeah, some genetics. Okay, how's your strength going with two bouts of prep so close together? Does it bother you that if it drops? As long, if does it bother you that it drops as long as you're in the right condition on stage? A uh, really good question that one. Um, so yeah, the strength has obviously dropped quite significantly. Um, in terms of my squat numbers. Uh, at the peak of my strength, I was, I was squatting four plates for like one rep, one assisted. So 180 kilos, and now squatting squatting three plates would be a real a real struggle. It would be my my one rep max. So uh, it doesn't bother me too much because I know that once things go to normal, the strength will increase. But um, and because I'm so focused on this goal at the moment, yeah, it doesn't bother me too much. But there, there has been a big a big you know, decline in strength since the cut. Um, are you programming for yourself this time around? If so, how do you avoid those moments where something unexpected happens and you begin to doubt yourself? I'll be tweaking and adjusting things every day. Um, so yeah, another good question. So basically I think, I mean, I track my weight on a daily basis. So every day I'll track my weight, I'll record it, and then for that week I'll have an average weight. And... If I get like two consecutive weeks where the weight has stayed the same, um, then I'll consider to maybe drop things further. So maybe lower the fats, lower the carbs a little bit. Um, but that's that's it really. I think when it comes to dieting, especially dieting for so long, it's it's important to look at the big picture um, and not just your weight on a day to day basis. Because you know with sodium levels, cortisols, I've recently found that as well. You're going to get some some fluctuations in the weight. So. Uh, I see. Yeah, just look at the big picture, and if the weight does stick for two, maybe three weeks, yeah, then it might be a good idea to to tweak things a bit. Okay, S Rymel ninety nine asks, how do you find out whether you are insulin sensitive or resistant, and how to find out about getting carbs? Um, how many carbs can you consume whilst getting lean? Um, well, I think everyone's different when it comes to carb consumption. Um, 
if you check out my uh, good video, I'll put up the link on here, um, how to calculate macros whilst cutting. That gives like a rough guide for what I feel are good, um, good numbers to hit uh, when you're first working out your macros. Um, so yeah, I say check that out. And in terms of insulin, yeah, I don't really worry about being insulin sensitive or resistant so much. Um, but obviously, if you find you're someone that does respond well to a slightly lower carb diet, and like you do get bloated with certain carbs or too much carbs, then yeah, keep that in mind, and maybe up your fats and lower your carbs slightly. Okay, AK series asks, how do you stick to your meal plan? Do you plan everything out a day before, or do you just wake up and fit all your meals as the day goes by? Um, generally, I think provided we've got a food in the house, like we've just done a shop, then I don't really think about what I'm going to eat um, until until the day, really. So, yeah, I just think make sure you've got enough variety of food around you, and then and then kind of plan it, and then plan it then. Um, things have been different recently when I've been so so obsessed with food that I'm constantly thinking about it. So I find I'm planning my breakfast like the evening before, but that's just at the moment. So generally, um, I'll kind of wake up and I'll see, you know, what do I fancy? I like some structure, so the breakfast will usually be the same. Um, some kind of OT protein combination, possibly a bit of fruit if I've got more carbs to play with. But yeah, uh, okay, right, another subscriber asks, where in the UK do you live and what do you do for a living? So, uh, yeah, like I said before, I'm a personal trainer and I live just outside of London in the awesome town of Croydon. Okay, and that is it for the YouTube questions. We're going to go to Facebook next. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, let's have a look here on Facebook. Right, so first question from George, my buddy George, how you doing? Okay, supplementation, uh, what's the best combo? Um, in terms of supplements, I think the most important thing is to do your research, find out what's good, um, because honestly, you walk into a health shop, you know, in my opinion, 90% of the supplements uh, aren't going to make much of a difference in all honesty. Um, go on to examine.com, really good source of information there. They're going to tell you what supplements are worth having, what ones aren't. Um, but generally, the supplements that I take uh, on a daily basis when I'm... I'm not going to talk about contest prep, but when I'm just generally either bulking or cutting. Um, obviously, protein supplements are great. However, protein really is just it's just food in powdered form. So... Um, when you need quite a lot of protein, I'd say that's it's a good one, yeah, just to hit those high numbers. Creatine, very well researched supplement as well, uh, great for adding strength and a bit of muscle size. Um, fish oil and vitamin D, and pretty much that's that's it. In terms of, I'm not even going to call them essential supplements, but in terms of well researched and um, effective supplements. Yeah, get your protein powder in just for convenience and uh, protein, convenience and protein, just for convenience, creatine, vitamin D and fish oil or omega-3, omega-3s basically, EPA and DHA kind of combination. Um, multivitamin, I say when you're getting into the, when you're getting quite lean, a multivitamin might come in handy as well as some BCAAs also, but I'd say for most people, they're not going to be, not going to be essential. Okay, creatine, his second question, he wrote quite a few questions, thanks George. Um, creatine and its, and its correct usage. Uh, so as far as I'm aware, I say just uh, go for creatine monohydrate. So don't worry about all these different fancy kind of creatines. Get some Crea Pure, Crea Pure, creatine monohydrate, and just take a 5 gram maintenance dose every day, uh, and that'll be fine. There's no need to load creatine. Um you'll find it's, it'll be effective a little bit quicker, but it's, it's completely unnecessary. So yeah, five grams a day as a maintenance, and that's it with creatine. Amino complexes and the use in bodybuilding and fat loss. Yeah, I think that like BCAAs, um, I think they're good once you hit those really deep, dark stages of prep. 
when your body fat's low, just for the kind of anti-catabolic effect. But apart from that, not necessary. Okay, his fourth question was macro counting and how to keep your diet interesting whilst hitting the mark. Um, I, how do I keep it interesting? I like to look online just for a lot of ideas and inspiration. So uh, I've actually recently discovered uh, Pinterest and that's great for um, yeah, getting new ideas for different, yeah, different protein filled meals basically. His fifth question was workout length um, and muscle splits uncovered. Uh, that's quite a complex question, George. Um, <laughs> muscle splits. Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to leave that off another video because that's that can't be answered in one question, I don't believe. Volume versus weight versus intensity. If I say same for that, quite in depth, I'm going to leave that for another video. But yeah, good questions nonetheless. Okay, Wayne Clement asks, how many times a week do you lift? And do you do any cardio and or H or hit hit training. Okay, so recently, whether I've been bulking or cutting, um, I've been following a five day split. So essentially lifting five days a week. Um, I find that works quite well for me. Back in 2013, I tried six days a week. Uh, so I do like a, a push, a pull, a lower twice a week, so six days. I found that a bit too much, to be honest. So for me, five days is a good amount. In terms of cardio, um, I prefer low intensity cardio. So in this prep, I've pretty much only stuck to walking. So walking on the treadmill or an incline, or walking outside. Uh, in the last prep, I did some high intensity stuff on the bike, um, but I found it just it just knocked me up too much. Uh, in fact, I did try it a couple of times during this prep, and it was a contributor to my um, kind of bloating and cortisol, kind of physical stress levels rising. So. For the moment, low intensity is fine, and really, it's all it's all personal preference with cardio. Um, so yeah, that's my answer for that. Ed Seeger asks, "Can you do cock push-ups?" Thanks, Ed. He's a mate of mine. Or he was before that question. Um, I haven't tried. Why don't you show him yet? <laughs> right, and I think we might have a couple more questions here. Do, 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 do. Let's have a look. Okay, IA Fitness asks, when's going to be your first cheat day challenge video up? I'm waiting. Okay, right, good question. So, yeah, I'm probably going to do like a 5,000 calorie calorie challenge at some stage, and then maybe a 10 and a 15, but I'm probably going to need to build my metabolism up first, um, otherwise there's going to be some, some serious fat gain. So, yeah, I'll start with a 5,000 calorie challenge some point after my show, and then... We'll see how it goes from there, but it'll be fun. I'll make sure it goes up on YouTube. And Ricky Reeves asks, when and how did you first meet Sarah? Um, right, okay, so me and Sarah actually met online um, on Plenty of Fish. So awesome dating site, a free dating site. And yeah, that was back in 2011 and... Yeah, I didn't really get much experience in online dating. She was the first person I, um, first person I went on a date with. And then, like, yeah, three years later, we got married. So, yeah, I suppose it all worked out okay. Um, and that is it, guys. There are all the questions done. Um, I'm currently a few days out from my contest, four days out now. I'm going to put up a little video in a two days' time, like a little pre contest vlog, just to uh, show me my progress, peak week progress. And then after that, some awesome footage of the BNBF finals, which I'm super pumped and excited about. Um, but thanks for your questions, guys. Some really good ones there. I hope I've answered them sufficiently for you. Uh, if not, just ask me again in the comment section below. And yeah, that is all. Right. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.